premium wireless earbuds that are known for having the highest quality to price ratio out there when it comes to similar products. They come with a variety of colours and interchangeable gel tips for your ears comfort and support and unlike some other brands they don't rip it out of your ears. Raycon's new everyday earbuds offer an improved rubber oil look and feel with optimised gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit as well as 8 hours of play. 32 hours battery life, and the earbud holder doubles as a charging capsule that four times recharges on the go. In addition to all that, Raycons also include an inbuilt mic, so you can use them to take advantage of New World's proximity voice chat. Raycons start at half the price of other premium audio brands, and also come with a 45 day happiness guarantee. Personally, I like to use my Raycons when chilling in the coffee shop, catching up on YouTube content, and most recently whilst chilling out or gathering in new worlds off camera. Click the link in the description below or go to buyraycon.com slash TLP to get up to 20% off your Raycon purchase. First, let's start with the pros, the good things about New World. I'll be rating the game on five different aspects. World design, gameplay, crafting and economy, end game, and UI slash quality of life. The biggest thing I love about New World is the feeling of actually being out in the world, and whilst there are a lot of reused assets that make you feel major deja vu playing through the game, the sense of scale and immersion when it comes to the size of your character in relation to the trees, mountains and buildings is the best I've experienced in the MMORPG genre. The view distance is extremely far, you'll see a giant mountain a hole in a way, and later learn that it's a place you can actually go explore. The gathering in New World at face value also feels like the best in the MMO genre. Every tree can be chopped, almost every boulder can be mined. The world is so densely populated with these gatherable nodes, which ties back to the feeling of immersion being out in the world. During the leveling process, the gathering makes the whole experience more enjoyable, as you'll be running from A to B, and constantly end up getting distracted by mining rocks, gathering hemp and chopping trees. The gathering feels like the thing that connects you to the world. Another best in genre aspect of New World has got to be the sound design, from the cracking of trees getting cut down by other players in the distance, to the satisfying ding of your items selling on the trading post, the punchy level up sound effect, general UI interaction sounds and the impactful hit SFX from combat. The sound team did an incredible job of this game and once again it all ties back into that feeling of immersion of being out in the world. Graphically New World looks absolutely stunning in places. The lighting is the sunsets, the reflections from the water, the mist rising up from the ground, the sense of immersion out in the world and visually it's a top 3 MMO that will be looking good for years to come. New World's combat, whilst having a lot of issues that I'll mention later, feels unique on a fundamental level. There isn't really a MMO RPG that has combat that feels like this, and it's a true action combat system, not a soft lock action combat system. So for range attacks, that means you actually have to aim and hit your target the same way you would in a first person shooter. I like that New World is a classless MMORPG, you can level up and equip every weapon in the game, and create a variety of different builds. This is something that will also improve going forward as more weapons are added such as the Greatsword, Daggers, Blunderbuss, Void Formula and so on. Massive potential for expansion here, and each edition adds content to the game via the Weapon Mastery grind. New World, as a this video, is a non-pay-to-win buy-to-play MMO that despite its issues provides enough 
from them to justify the box cost if you enjoy the core gameplay. New World is also a game that whilst light on content variety, is clearly trying to provide an and PvE players, which will obviously expand going forward. On the side of things, you've got duels, open world PvP, territory sieges, PvP missions, and a 20 vs 20 queuable instanced battleground. On the PvE side of things, you've got corrupted portals, elite group grind zones, which are like open world dungeons, 5 player expeditions, world bosses, corrupted invasions, the main quest line, and all of the crafting slash gathering content as well as player housing. So a decent mix in my opinion. At face value, for the first few weeks of playing, the crafting system feels amazing. It's super approachable for this, feels like a core aspect of the game, and you can also level up your character through crafting. It's not until later that the cracks in this system start to appear, which I'll talk about later, but at face value, it's good. Don't lose your s when building an online store. Use Shopify's professional templates and drag and drop editor to create your online store. The five player experience. Dungeons and New World's take on Dungeons are probably my favourite piece of multiplayer content the game currently offers. Difficulty feels reasonable, especially on your first run, visually expedition environments look pretty epic, and the bosses have a reasonable amount of mechanics. If you take the completionist mindset and play New World like RuneScape, trying to max everything, the game can feel quite enjoyable and keep you playing for a long period of time with those personal set goals. That being said, the game currently lacks completionist to flex items, which I'll talk about later. Generally, the new world looks pretty clean and doesn't clutter the heck out of your screen like most Asian MMOs. That being said, it still needs work and has a lot of bugs, which I'll mention later. Next, let's talk about the cons. Some of these issues are more fundamental than others, some are just small things that wind me up. Just know that I clearly enjoy the game and wanted to succeed, if not I wouldn't have put in over 500 hours in less than 2 months. Don't be one of those absolute losers on New World forums that get offended by any critique of the game. Don't be one of those idiots that dismiss any criticism as hate because you're level 35, play for 1 hour per day, and you're still in the honeymoon phase so you haven't reached the point where these issues start to appear. Amazon has infinite money and resources, this game has gone through more testing than any other MMORPG in recent memory, and a lot of the game's issues are inexcusable. If you're someone that feels the need to dick suck a multi-billion dollar company in the face of legit critique, then reevaluate your life, close the video, and fuck off. Let's begin. A lot of the towns in New World feel very copy-paste. Morningdale is basically Windswood, but rotated slightly. This isn't an issue with towns from the newest zones, Reekwater and Ebonscale Reach though. There's a lack of mob variety, and a lot of copy-paste assets, animations, and areas of the world that will make you feel massive deja vu. After level 30, you know where every chest will be located in any building you encounter going forward. Healing large group content feels like a mess, and you're unable to target heal people outside of your 5 player group. You cannot make groups larger than 5 players. Endgame boss farming is antisocial as it's designed that only 5 to 10 people can get loot, and loot priority is based damage. This means as a healer it's extremely difficult to get loot as your healing contribution isn't counted, only damage. Many groups turn away healers for certain endgame content due to this system, and it feels really weird. The body blocking in New World can be infuriating at times. It takes about three mobs to surround you in a corner and body block you to the point of being stuck. Players can also body block you in combat which makes melee feel less 
in large boss battles or fighting mobs in tight areas. Getting permanently staggered by low level mobs as a level 16 full plate armor is one of the most awful feelings in the game. In New World there's no diminishing returns on getting staggered, so if you're trying to fight four or more mobs at once for weapon mastery farming, the combat feels utter dog shit, as you're constantly being interrupted and thrown around like a ragdoll by mobs 30 levels lower than you. It's just not fun. Some combat animations still feel very clunky with long animation locks. Some abilities can be dodge roll cancelled whilst others cannot. Everything needs to be cancelable via dodge roll for the sake of consistency. New World has the worst designed questing in any MMO in recent years. Super repetitive, there's only 3 or 4 types of quests in the game, most have long runs back and forth to the quest giver, the rewards for these quests don't feel appropriate for the amount of effort evolved, and none of them give you multiple choice quest rewards, so you're likely never going to miss a weapon or piece of armor upgrade from a quest. As a result of this awful leveling, everybody ignores the side quest and simply levels by purely spamming town project board quests, as it's much faster and gives you more freedom. New World has a lot of group content tied to the MSQ, and whilst this wasn't a problem during the launch of the game, it's going to be difficult for new players to find groups for the 25, 45, and 55 dungeon, with the vast majority of the player base being 60, and each server having a small amount of players looking for this content. This could be solved in the future though by the devs creating level 60 versions of these dungeons, and scaling up the new players so they can group with 60s. New World had multiple game-breaking duplication exploits during the first month of launch, which has essentially ruined the game's economy. Yes, a lot of bugs have been fixed now, yes a lot of people have been banned, but it's hard to tell the true extent of the damage done here, as a lot of the duped gold was laundered through crafting, items sold to other players, and so on. Even if the game didn't have any issues with exploiting and bugs, the new world economy is designed in a way that's turned out to be deflationary rather than inflationary, which means the prices of everything in the game in general have gone down since launch. The reasons for this are that there's more gold sinks in the game taking gold out of the economy than there are systems injecting gold into the economy. Gold sinks include town upgrades from destroyed invasion buildings, high repair costs on death, respec costs, housing taxes, money spent on consumables, and money spent on tuning orbs that are consumed when you enter a dungeon. As for gold generators, you've got a 5% chance to receive up to 10 or 15 gold from killing a mob, 100 to 150 gold per quest from mid to late game. At max level, people have likely finished with the questing though, so less gold is generated via questing as time goes on. 200 to 350 gold per game of outpost rush, and about 600 gold per siege and invasion. This combined with the fact that every player has the ability to craft and gather everything, puts New World's economy in a weird situation. It's also one of the few MMO 